Yeah, welcome to the Let's Talk ICP podcast uh, in this special Bitcoin integration CKBTC episode. This is the first episode uh, that we have of several dedicated to the ICP teams that are working on the CKBTC or the Chain Key Bitcoin. We plan to start with DeFi projects that participated in the last IC Labs edition at the uh, Definity HQ uh, in Zurich. And today we have with us Oliver Barr, a Finteres co-founder. He was with us in the podcast uh, a few months ago, and it's a real pleasure to have you here with us again, Oliver. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Appreciate it. Uh, great. Uh, before to start in digging more in, in the CKBTC and the, how it was uh, the IC Labs, for people who couldn't listen to the, the first episode, could you introduce yourself and present to the audience what is uh, Finterest and what is the, the value, its value proposition? Yeah, yeah. So my name is Oliver Barr. Um, I'm the co-founder of Finterest along with uh, Carl, who's downstairs in another meeting right now. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we've been interested in the IC for a while, but we've been working on other projects in the past, but some, some time had cleared up. And so, um, we kind of, we just wanted to participate in the DeFi ecosystem and, um, we know there's a real big need for, for robust borrowing and lending on any like DeFi ecosystem. And at the time that we'd started up or we'd started like brainstorming project ideas, we'd seen that no one else was really working on it on the IC. And, uh, so there was just a bunch of demand for that. So. Uh, we put together a team, found a couple of Matoko devs in the community that we had known. And yeah, we, uh, we're, we're going through the audit process right now, but we're, we're getting ready to launch within the next month or two max. So um, yeah, we, uh, we see a real big need for borrowing and lending on the IC. Um, there's a lot of different people that could take advantage of all this IC they've amassed, or especially people that have these neurons that are dissolving and paying out in ICP or node providers that are getting paid in ICP. They don't necessarily want to just go like sell that. Um, they're interested in the health of the protocol and the, the tokens. So being able to go on our platform and perhaps borrow against that with uh, USDC at some point in the, in the near future, CK USDC maybe, um, then yeah, I think that's going to be a huge, huge value add for the ecosystem. Um, additionally, other, other projects that are building DeFi, um, they have a place to store their TVL when they're not using it and still um, get some, some access to collateral or, or yield from that. So um, yeah, we just see it as a, a real big need in the, in the ecosystem, and there's going to be a bunch of exciting stuff that gets built on top of us that we're excited to help out with. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you are working uh, with um, Carl in this project. Hmm. Um, what is like maybe talk us a little bit more about uh, the first steps or the beginnings of Pinterest, and mm -hmm. now what is the your your uh, perspective for the future, for the next months, for the next years, uh, yeah. if you have any updates to share with the, our audience. Yeah, for sure. It's actually, uh, we're almost coming up on the, the one year anniversary of our first GitHub commit to, to Fintress. So um, it's a good time for a little retrospective. So yeah, it was back in, it was back in March of last year. Um, me and Carl, yeah, we had the idea for it and um, he's a, he's a front end developer. He's super talented. So within a couple of days, we had thrown together a pretty functional front end. Um, we went to Definity and got a grant from them. Um, and then, we, yeah, we hired a couple of, uh, of developers from the community that I had been chatting to for a while and just happened to know that we're working on Matoko. So uh, it kind of just all lined up perfectly from there um, after that. So, yeah, we got that initial grant um, and then we put up our own money to, to hire some developers and, and get work started. And then we, uh, we got in contact with Polychain and they led our, our seed round. So we raised some money through them in nine yards and uh, yeah, it's been going great. Like I mentioned before, we're, we're in the audit process right now. We're working with QuantStamp. Um, they're one of the, one of the top auditing firms in all of crypto and this is their first Motoko audit. So we're really excited to be kind of christening their, their first Motoko audit and bringing them into the space, hopefully. Uh, more DeFi projects can take advantage of that because they're they're really a top notch team. Um, so yeah, once we uh, once we work through everything with them, we're getting ready to to go live. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> looks like it seems pretty busy, right? <laughs> the last yeah, no, uh, it has been uh, especially the last couple of months. We've been traveling a lot and trying to kind of spread the word of mm -hmm. ICP um, and also meeting other teams um, on the on the IC. We'll probably talk about ICP Lab at some point, but. Um, yeah, it's been it's been great. I'm out here in uh, in San Francisco right now for the the Code and State event. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys don't know Code and State, um, a couple of ICP old school Definity guys um, put together some. It's kind of a couple of different projects right now, but one of them is like an incubator, and so they're 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 giving a bunch of assistance to um, early startups and projects in the space. So anyone that's uh, 
I guess it's it's good if kind of like after you get your if you get a Definity grant, then you kind of go to Code State and they can they can help usher you into the um, yeah the the wild world of uh, of ICP startups. But yeah, they uh, they were great. I got to meet a couple of the teams out there. The the hot or not guys were there, so I got to meet them for the first time. Good guys. Um, but yeah, it's been a it's been a wild couple. It's been a wild year, I guess. Yeah. Wow, yeah, sounds so exciting. And um, yes, I am curious for the last, uh, as you mentioned before, the IC Labs that yeah. was on the Zurich, on the HQ of Definity. How was your time at IC Labs? And tell us uh, what conclusions did you draw? And how was it uh, to meet other DeFi projects? Um, yeah, yeah. And working on the IC ecosystem. And what was your experience experiences during those days there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was a crazy week. Um, they had us at the the Definity HQ from like Monday to Thursday, and we had a couple of things on Friday. But they had us there from like eight a.m. to like eight p.m. So they were they were working us hard, but it was great. We uh we got to meet pretty much every single like individual team that works at Definity that's at the the Zurich headquarters. So um, it was really good for them. They were able to get direct feedback from a lot of the builders in the ecosystem. Um, and it was good for us because we could for like make these contacts, but also see that their head is in the right place as far as they're aware of shortcomings of the IC and they're, they're definitely not unaware of the issues that the community is raising um, about a lot of things. I mean, it's a, it's a crazy undertaking that they're, they're going on. So it's understandable that there's going to be a lot of need for, for tweaks. And they're, they're certainly aware of that. They're super open to community feedback. Um, so that was really promising knowing that they're, they're definitely open-minded about that. Um, it was also really fun meeting all the other DeFi teams. Um, a lot of the teams were from China, so it was, it was great to kind of be able to reach out to that community more. Um, they were really interested in reaching out to kind of more of the, the Western space and making that kind of connection. So, uh, we're doing some work behind the scenes to try and make that happen. Apparently from what I hear, the, the Chinese ICP ecosystem is almost as big as the rest of the world's combined. So, um, it'll be good to kind of be able to cross that barrier, not just with like TVL, but also working with their developers. Um, we've had to solve a lot of the same problems over and over again. So it'll be good to collaborate with them and remove that um, issue. Um, and then, yeah, I think the kind of the biggest thing that we accomplished at ICP Lab was making sure that Definity understood the importance of the ETH integration uh, for, for DeFi uh, projects on the scene. Uh, without access to like USDC or some so, some sort of stablecoin that people already use and trust, um, DeFi capabilities are pretty limited. And I also think that a lot more risk tolerant people live on like the ETH, ETH ecosystems as opposed to to Bitcoiners. Um, it's a bit hard to reach out to Bitcoin maxis and convince them to try and use some novel technology. So I think the ETH integration is <clears throat> when things are really going to start skyrocketing as as far as TVL and usage goes. Um, so yeah, overall it was it was a great experience. Um, met all the, all the a lot of different DeFi teams, all the different teams at Definity, and they also put us in touch with a lot of investors and press people as well. So um, they're definitely doing their their legwork behind the scenes. Nice, yeah, it was pretty useful. Yeah, yeah. so happy to hear you. Um, yes, you mentioned with other DeFi projects. Um, if I'm not wrong, uh, it was like Astrox Network, the Chinese people that mm -hmm. you mentioned, the Brutoshi, the CEO of Astrox Network. I was talking with with him yesterday. As well with uh, Pinterest, IC Lighthouse, Infinity yep. Swap, Helix Markets, Mix Labs, ICP League, um, even Jumi, um, mm. and other different projects. Um, that's amazing. And my question is more about the, the milestone of the Definity Foundation, about the, the CKBTC and the, the Bitcoin integration. Mm. Tell us, Oliver, according to your opinion, what what the milestone achieved uh, by Definity with the CKBTC supports in, in general for, for the industry? You think is is a great milestone? Is um, something like pretty disruptive? Yeah, I think the the Bitcoin integration on the whole is a, a really novel and important piece of tech. Um, being able to directly make calls on other blockchains as opposed to kind of the current paradigm of having bridges set up with contracts on each blockchain that have some unsafe untrusted communication between them. Um, I think that's going to be really important in the next five or 10 years. Right now, we see a pretty adversarial relationship between blockchains. Um, the example I always like to use is the Avalanche uh, bridge. When they launched, they had the incentive program to bridge people over from Ethereum. And I mean, they were successful in taking tens or hundreds of millions of dollars of TVL off that blockchain. 
working, but over time you saw it kind of fade away. It wasn't a real permanent change. It was kind of just a one-off adversarial, I'm going to take some money while I can. So I think <clears throat> the idea of blockchains being able to really communicate with each other directly, natively, um, make calls on each other's on each other's networks is going to be a real game changer, um, changing that paradigm from adversarial to uh, collaborative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how is FinTech working on this Bitcoin integration and mm -hmm. BTC and how like take advantage about the this, this integration? Yeah, so we, we're planning on offering both CK BTC and native BTC um, for our borrowers and lenders. So if we have old school Bitcoin maxis that really are concerned about the safety of their Bitcoin, they, they don't even trust a, a pretty decentralized kind of wrapping uh, mechanism, then they're free to use our, our, uh, our layer one integration. And so that'll work a little bit more like a, a centralized exchange where when you're ready to deposit, we'll give you a Bitcoin address that you send your Bitcoin to, and then it all is handled at that point. Um, so the 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 workflow is pretty is pretty seamless there. Um, and then yeah, CKBTC is just super convenient. If you're going to be trading a lot on the IC, if you're going to be living in that ecosystem a lot, um, if you're not super worried about like how you're storing it and off ramping it, I think that's going to be a, a great option for people. Um, and so we we're going to offer that as well, um, just for the the convenience and cost factor. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, it's also I'm curious in, in the tech part or the technical aspect, has this implementation been difficult for, for Pinterest, uh, like adapt the CKBTC and the Bitcoin integration? Mm -hmm. I suppose that the Finity team has supported you um, with integration at all times, but how it was behind the scenes, uh, this implementation and adapt the CKBTC to Pinterest? Yeah, the CKBTC is super easy. It's it's pretty much treated just the same as any other token on our platform. Um, the native Bitcoin integration is a bit more tricky because we have to we have to create a wallet and um, get notified when when Bitcoin is sent to it and handle it there. And it's it's handled a little bit differently. It adds a bit more complication. But I uh, on the whole, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. The library they put out for the the Bitcoin integration handled almost everything we needed, so it wasn't it wasn't too challenging. Um, and yeah, CKBTC is a, is a breeze to implement. So as far as convenience goes, CKBTC is is definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And uh, yeah, you mentioned before as well the Ethereum integration. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you planning to do this uh, in the near future, or is it yeah? So <clears throat> when when we met. Uh, one of the most the things I was most impressed by when we met with Dieter at uh, the Definity HQ, I think it was on Wednesday, like mm -hmm. Wednesday afternoon. Um, and that was the session talking about the ETH integration. And so that it was supposed to be like an hour. And I think it dragged on for like two and a half hours or something because all of the teams desperately wanted that to get implemented. And so we were all kind of brainstorming of ways that we could get kind of like an MVP, like bare, bare bones minimum ETH integration up and running so we can take advantage of that. And so we kind of brainstormed some stuff. And then the next day at the last session, Dieter came in with his laptop and a new presentation. He's like, all right, I have a, I have a plan here. Here's how we can kind of get this out and rolling quickly. And so they're going to be working with directly with some of the teams in the ecosystem, some of the Chinese teams. We're going to help out a bit um, and try and get uh, kind of a bare bones ETH integration up and running um, just ASAP for the health of the DeFi ecosystem. And then after that, they'll they'll implement something a little bit similar, more similar to the, the Bitcoin integration as far as the true decentralized trustless manner of it um so yeah i was really i was really impressed with their kind of ability to recognize the importance of that and to turn around quickly quickly with a plan to to get that integrated mm -hmm. great awesome. uh, so yeah, the question was if we're going to integrate it yeah definitely uh needing we need we need a stable coin real bad um borrowing and lending is a bit of a when you're borrowing and lending, both of them are like risky, volatile assets. You're, it's a pretty unsafe. Uh, you have to kind of really know what you're doing because of liquidations and whatnot. So it's a lot riskier to be both lending out and then borrowing against a, uh, a volatile asset and borrowing a volatile asset. So uh, people really want stable coins. I think that's kind of the, the number one need for it. Obviously having ether and access to all the other ERC twenties is going to be insane. Um, that like for the, medium to long term people are going to come up with some insane DeFi from that but just for like the short term immediate survival and health of the network i think uh yeah rushing that out asap is going to be important yeah okay oliver and yeah just the last question um i'm curious last time in our episode in our podcast in our talk we discuss about um the um, uh, uh, 
um, the stable coin, right? The the, mm -hmm. the stable coin on, on Pinterest. My question here is: uh, any update of that? Uh, yeah. I think PCP community are excited and are waiting like uh, any uh, project that go farther and, and try to do the, the stable coin adapt uh, in, in, in internet computer. You mentioned before that it's pretty complex and it's like a tricky one, but my question is now uh, if it's any update, if maybe it's any way that you can collaborate with other projects, with other DeFi projects to to achieve this this super milestone. And I think yeah. we can uh, attract more users, Ethereum and from other blockchain once we have the stable coin, because it's another concern from the outside the, the community, the ICP community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, any updates for that or what is your yeah, yeah. yeah, so <clears throat> I have good news and bad news about that. So the bad news is unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to undertake a stable coin. It would be really convenient and kind of easy because uh, an over collateralized stable coin similar to DAI is almost identical in architecture to what we're building with the borrowing and lending protocol. You have over collateralized vaults where people mint tokens from and there's liquidations and whatnot. So it's it's pretty much the same architecture. It would not be hard for us to, to build that and put that out there. Um, however, due to the fact that we're a US based company um, and the regulatory landscape for stable coins looks a bit like a nightmare, it just is not a worthwhile kind of risk to return. Um, thing for for Fentress, unfortunately. Um, however, we are in contact right now. I don't know to what extent they want things to be public, so we'll we'll keep it under wraps. But we do know someone that is working on a stable coin right now. They have a lot of good backing and connections, and we're gonna we're gonna definitely help them out and make sure that gets out ASAP. So, um, yeah, I uh, I don't know what their their timetable is as far as like re releasing any information about that. But there is there are people in the background working on making that happen. I think most likely we'll get USDC on the chain sooner than we get a native stablecoin. But for the for the long term health of the the protocol, it'll be good that we have a, a native one coming out at some point soon. Uh huh. Nice, great news for sure. It's like uh, private information that we cannot share by now. But... Yeah, I, I like to bring a little alpha when I come on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> great. Just for you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, Oliver Barr, a co-founder of Pinterest. Uh, thank you for your time. I know you are busy and this is good news. It's so exciting for me uh, again talk with you and yeah, see you soon in, in another episode. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks so much for having me on. Great. Have a good day. See you. you